I'm Joe Norquist, N-O-R-Q-U-I-S-T, no D. Thank you for coming in today, and as I told you, we're collecting stories about experiences, people's experiences with the ELCA. So please share your story with us. Well, I was raised in the Mission Covenant Church, became a Lutheran when I got married 57 years ago. And one week after we got married, we took off from home. And after a couple of years in the Army and a couple of years in practice in northern Minnesota, we went to Tan Tanganyika for, to be a medical missionary. And Tanganyika became uh, Tanzania while we were there. 1961 became a nation, a wonderful experience. And those eight years, those seven years that we were medical missionaries, we now, I'm 80 years old now, and we think those eight years were the best years of our life by far. Because it was, it was gratifying, didn't make much money, but well, that's not a reason, but it was gratifying the work we could do. And I saw things that I'd never see in this country. I've, been, I've seen a smallpox epidemic and uh, there is no smallpox anymore. And we see leprosy and we'd see, unfortunately, injuries that we couldn't take care of. So medically, sometimes it was frustrating, but it was gratifying. I learned to do cataract surgery and did about 45 cataracts a year. I never do that in this country, but uh, it, it worked. It was, it was very nice. And the Augustana Synod became LCA while we were there. And after we came home, LCA became ELCA with the other churches. And it's been such a growth. Augustana was deeply pietistic, a, a beautiful belief in the gospel and the Bible, but almost, almost fundamentalistic, almost that everything was just the way it was written in the Bible. And there were beautiful stories and beautiful music and uh, I'm grateful for that. But as time has gone by and as we've become more educated, we've had experiences, we've had children, four children, and they're all different. And the church has moved as knowledge has moved. Uh, in my grade school, I believed in evolution. And my fourth grade teacher said, I had a book that talked about some monkeys and or, um, whatever they were, apes. And I took, I took it home and my parents said, well, Joy, we don't believe that. And I told my teacher that, well, we don't believe that. She said, that's all right, Joy, the scientists are showing this. But then in college, I took a course in evolution, and I saw how every, every, science, every branch of science showed that there was evolution. And I see no conflict in evolution and, and the Bible. And I love the Bible, and I read it almost every day, and uh, um, are in church, we're in church at least two or three times a week. Um, our first son uh, was a blessing to us, and it, and it was so wonderful that we had four children, one boy, then one girl, then one girl, another girl, and then another boy. Our second daughter died of cancer about uh, 12 years ago or so, maybe 13 or so. Uh, that was sad. Our oldest son is gay, and it's been a, a wonderful benefit to our family because our grandchildren can grow up knowing Uncle Steve and Michael, and they can, they can feel comfortable. There's no discomfort with this situation of a, a gay person in the family, and a wonderful man, uh, both of them. And that's been a nice lesson. And our experiences in Africa, and our experiences in medical practice here. And then after I retired, I had already started uh, making movies. I had a nice Bolex camera, that's, that's a pretty good Bola 60 millimeter camera. And I took pictures of our work in Africa. When we came home, my wife said, Joe, that, that camera's in the closet. You probably could sell it or use it for something. Well, at that time, there was a need to teach doctors about Down syndrome. They were telling parents, don't get attached to your child. He'll never amount to anything. And uh, he'd better off in an institution. That was bad advice. And I said, well, I'm not a specialist, I'm not a pediatrician or a psychiatrist, but I do have a camera, maybe I could make a movie. I, I never made a movie, but we made, I made what was called, a, it used to be called um, uh, multimedia. It was, the meaning of it was, there are three screens, 
I had four cameras or projectors, so there were slides and then movies, movie in the center and the slides. And I made a movie about Down syndrome and it was called Love is to Grow On and it had a lot of dandelions in it and beautiful children. And I liked it so much that I thought maybe I could make a movie. So I kept my camera, I still have it. I think it's an antique and I think I, I, I could get a lot of money for it maybe. But I made uh, several films. One was about uh, alcoholism, one was about aging, growing old splendidly. It was called You Haven't Lived Yet. And then one about people with disabilities and one about a father as a nurturing parent. And uh, through the years then, movies became less desirable. The schools and churches didn't want movies, so they wanted videos. So I started making videos. The first thing was SVHS, not too good of quality, a little better than home movies. And I had a, a what was it called? A, 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 something about baking. We'll have to cut this. Um, it was called Cook, Cook, doesn't matter. I had a, I had a editing machine, but it really wasn't very good. Toaster, it was called a toaster. And I used that. And then when I retired, a little early at 62, I worked in a company that a friend of ours had started. And it was fun to have a work where I could play with video. I could give some lectures on hypothermia sometimes uh, around the country, and that was fun. But I never had really good equipment. I would like to have Betamax or something, but I, I didn't, or Betacam, I mean. But I didn't. And uh, so we, I got into making movies. So now I've, I've been making videos for Global Health Ministries, um, about their work. I've made three for Lutherans Concerned uh, about gay issues. Uh, and we've uh, made some for um, churches. And now I'm working on one on malaria. So it's been a good life. I think at 80, I think about death and think that, well, you know, I could die in a week or a month. Uh, I'm not afraid of it. I don't want to die. I'm 80. I'd like to live to be 94. I'm going to live to be 94. But I probably won't. <laughs> but we keep saying, my wife and I, that she says, oh, I'll die soon, sooner than you. Uh, and I think statistically, I'll probably die first. But we like life and, and we like to live. And when we die, we have no fears of that. So it's, it's been a good life. And the ELCA has been a big part of that life. Our life is centered around the church. We have a, um, adult education on Sunday morning and then church, we both sing in the choir. And then on Wednesday, usually there's another educational thing or Bible study, and that's nice. Our, most of our friends are from our church. I've never been, I've never been in the social life of the doctors somehow, because you go to a, a, media, a party, party, oh, where are you going? Where are you going this winter? Or what's your golf score like? <laughs> and I, I never felt too comfortable that way. So we're thankful for life, and this week has been just marvelous, that the ELCA is moving in a direction that... I was on a task force, the first task force of the Minnesota Synod, 30, maybe 29 years ago, and that committee, after studying and meeting gay people, and they all said, we have been wrong and we have to change. Well, that was 29 years ago. Another committee, about 20 years ago. and. Uh, now, finally, the church is saying, and I do have a heart for those, a third of us probably who feel that this is wrong, it's going to take a while to realize that they are very sincere about this, but they are, are wrong. They, they are going to see that the Bible is not insisting that we, if we work on Sunday, we have to be killed, or that if someone divorces, they have to. And so, therefore, the Bible is not insisting that gay people, if they could change, should change. And so, it's, I think the ELCA is going in the right direction. And think an interest in poverty, an interest in world, a vision of, of uh, partnership rather than we missionaries bringing you poor people uh, the gospel. So, the gospel is working, and I'm, I'm pleased.